Welcome back to I Can Unbox Anything. Today we're unboxing the Cast Iron Skillet Brownie Baking Kit. So I was in the range shopping just after Christmas and I saw these reduced to $5.99. I actually don't know how much they cost before they were reduced. I'm guessing it was somewhere north of £10. I wonder if it was like $13.99 or something like that. I don't know. I can't find the price. If you do know the original price of this, let me know in the comments. So this is the Modern Gourmet Cast Iron Skillet Brownie Baking Kit. And it's a little cast iron skillet with a kit to make a brownie inside of it. Now they did have this in several different varieties. I think there was a Nutella brownie, there was a chocolate chip cookie, and there was a chocolate pizza in a pan thing as well but they all look pretty much the same idea and I thought I'm not going to buy four of these just so I can test four rather similar things. Let's have a look and it's got Toblerone in there. So let's open it up first and have a look and see what we actually get and then we'll read the destructions. And there's our tiny skillet, a bag of brown powder. Toblerone bar which is taped inside the packet and it's like the come on. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, that's very nearly a Toblerone isn't it three peaks in there it's like the ones you get in those I don't, know, I don't know if I've ever actually had an assortment of chocolates that had mini Toblerones in there, but that's the kind of thing you would get in one of those big boxes of assorted chocolates, isn't it? If it was like that. So how many grams of Toblerone have we got? Doesn't say. Well, when we go to the kitchen, I will weigh this Toblerone so you can know how many grams of chocolate we've got there. Okay, right, so care instructions for skillet. Now let's do the ingredients first. So the brownie mix ingredients, wheat flour, sugar, brown sugar, cocoa, egg powder, soybean oil, salt, flavorings, raising agent, E500, color, E150A, may contain milk. Swiss milk chocolate with honey and almond nougat, 10%. Ingredients, sugar, whole milk powder, cocoa butter, cocoa, well, you know, it's Toblerone. Do I need to, do I need to read the instructions for Toblerone? I don't think I do. So, Care instructions for skillet. Wash and dry thoroughly with a sponge or stiff brush before reuse and storage. Rub a small amount of blah, 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 blah. How to season a skillet. Uh, suitable for electric or gas stovetop and oven only. Always cook on a low heat. Caution, skillet will become very hot in use. Well, really? Always use oven gloves when handling. So unnecessary plastic coating on the handle here. Uh, So instructions, you will need two tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of water, a quarter of a teaspoon of vegetable oil for greasing the skillet. Directions, well, I think we'll do the directions when we actually take this to the kitchen and make it. Be careful because the handle is very hot. No, it isn't. Okay, so the skillet. Well, I bought, I gotta confess, I bought this because I thought, oh, what a lovely little skillet. Uh, when I got it home, I was thinking, okay, well, apart from making this brownie, when am I ever going to use this skillet again? I think I went to a restaurant once and they served the garlic bread, individual kind of portions, person-sized portions of, well, not person-sized portions, because you wouldn't fit a person in there, but individual portions, that's the word I was looking for, individual portions of garlic bread in little skillets like this. And I remember looking at the skillet at the time and thinking, gosh, I really want to steal that. Um, and of course I didn't, but now I don't have to because I own one. But when am I ever going to use this tiny, tiny skillet again? It's not even very deep. If it was maybe twice that deep, it might have been more useful for sauces or an individual portion of shakshuka or something like that. Anyway, there it is. It is a true cast iron skillet. How useful that will prove to be outside of this exercise of cooking an instant brownie in it, we shall see. So let's get this to the kitchen and we'll give it a try. All right, first things first, the amount of chocolate we got in this packet is eight grams. 
three little triangles of Toblerone. Okay, now following the instructions to the letter, empty the brownie mix into a mixing bowl. Add two tablespoons of butter, softened. Actually, mine's a little bit on the soft side, but I had to just soften it in the microwave, which has melted some of it. One tablespoonful of water. Mix until completely blended. Grease the bottom and sides of the skillet, which I have already washed per the instructions. Now it says to use about a quarter teaspoonful of oil for this, which I judge to be, I'm not gonna measure it. That's about a quarter teaspoonful. Make sure that's all over the pan and up the sides. Spread the batter evenly onto the skillet. Make sure we don't waste any, because there's not much of it. Okay, well, that's about as even as we're gonna get, I think. Break the Swiss milk chocolate into pieces. Well, the smallest pieces I can break it into is triangles, and press them into the batter. Bake for 15 to 18 minutes. Now, it'd be terribly wasteful to spin up the oven just for this tiny pan. So I have actually picked my moment and I've got the oven running, roasting some vegetables, which we're gonna put in a soup later. Now also of note is that I'm using a gas oven. It says preheat to 180, which I'm told is the equivalent of gas mark six. That's the best approximation I can get. I have a gas oven. There are no gas oven instructions on the box. Just thought I might taste this batter as is. Now, obviously, if you're immunocompromised, eating raw flour might not be the best idea in the world because you can get E. coli from raw flour, apparently, but it's never worried me. If it does worry you, then obviously don't do that. Just taste like cake mix. Kind of gritty, actually. The sugar's probably quite coarse. Right, that's the 15 minute mark. I'm gonna stop there because I had a peep through the door and it does actually appear to be rising quite well. So I think we'll stop there. Be careful, the handle is very hot. And there it is. I would say that's baked. I don't think that needs any longer. So it's got a little bit of cracking on the top there. And yeah, I think we're just gonna be okay with that. So I've gotta leave that to cool for five minutes before we give it a taste. Well, five minutes have elapsed and the handle's still really hot actually. So here is my chocolate brownie and I'm gonna taste this. It says actually on the pack, it says, serve as is or with ice cream and or other toppings. So I'm gonna try it as it is. I haven't actually got any ice cream, but I've got something else I can put on it. So let's have a look and see what this is like. I'll take a piece out that's got no, well, it's definitely cooked through. Tasting time. Well, it's got that kind of brownie crust on it, which is good. That's actually quite nice. I would say that's not as gooey as I would expect perhaps a chocolate brownie to be but it could be that my oven's running a bit hot. I did have it right on the top shelf. But I think sometimes the gooiness of brownies is proportional to the depth, and this is quite a shallow pan. So as a topping, I'm gonna to have some of this mascarpone style yogurt in lieu of ice cream, because I don't have ice cream. I haven't got room in the freezer for it. Mm, yeah, that works. So I'd say what we've got here is not really as gooey and sticky as a brownie might normally be. It is very nice. Well, okay, so that was a taste test. Let's just go back to the studio and reflect on what this is all about. So at the end of this process, I am left with this rather cute little iron skillet, although I haven't really much of a clue what I will do with it next. It would be much more useful if it's twice that deep, and actually it probably would have made a better brownie if it was twice that deep. So the brownie itself, by the way, this is a serving suggestion, you can tell because it says serving suggestion and because this pan is much, much bigger than this one. But, so the brownie, it tasted great. Actually, uh, I'll be honest, it tasted actually really good. It was really nice and chocolatey, not overly sweet. Uh, uh, the texture was a bit more towards a cookie than a brownie. So it was kind of turning into a biscuit and that's probably, well, I'm prepared to accept the blame for that. That could just be my cooking skills. It could be that my oven was too hot. It could be that this pan is a little bit too shallow to cook a brownie or any combination of the above. So final thoughts on this kit. It exists not to make a brownie, but to be a gift. That's what the purpose of this is. It's, it's a kind of novelty gift for impulse purchase, I suppose, or for people who are really racking their brains and can't think of something to give to someone 
or perhaps just, you know, it's one of those things where you look at it and think, oh, I know someone who might like that. In any case, I don't think it's tremendous value for money. I do think they could have been a bit more generous with the chocolate. I paid $5.99 for this, and I still think that's a little bit steep considering the very small amount of ingredients in there, and that this is a cheap mass-produced iron pan. The original price, which I'm assuming would have been $12.99, $13.99, something like that, I don't think it's value for money. But gifts aren't necessarily about value for money. They're about remembering to be kind to people that you know. So I don't think it's necessarily a slap in the face or a pan around the face. <laughs> if you've received one of these, it means someone cared about you enough to think of buying you a gift. And that's always a good thing. So anyway, let me know in the comments what you think I should cook next in this little pan. Should I try and make the smallest possible full English breakfast, maybe? Let me know what you think in the comments, what you think of this kit, and if you've received one of these, what did you think of it? I think that's about all we can say for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.